Well, I guess. Uh, Preseason game number two, excellent job by our team and our coaching staff of getting the intensity up out there. It was a great day. There was a lot of uh, enthusiasm on the both sides of the football. Uh, the defense started fast on the first series, stopped the first offense, stopped the second offense. And then the first and second offense went down the field and drive on the next couple of series. Outstanding day for both. Uh, we ended up with a two-minute drill, a lot of great things. Uh, we still had some protection problems, got better. Overall, I thought the, uh, the offense had a better day today, scored points, made some big plays. A couple of stats for you. Garrett was 18 and 32 for 308 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. Max was 11 and 19 for 125 yards, one touchdown. Russian Josh Williams was, had seven rushes, 66 yards. Uh, John Emery and Tyron did not practice. Almighty Gilman had six rushes for 25 yards. Corey Connor, five for 15. Those young, back, young backs look good. Devontae Lou, uh, who I said was having a good um, camp, had five receptions for 85 yards. Malik Neighbors, four receptions. Deion Smith, three receptions. Brian Thomas, Jack Best, all those guys had pretty good days. On defense, Jay Ward had eight tackles. Uh, Xavier Carter had two sacks. Mason Smith had three sacks. So, uh, overall, good day. Uh, our kicker had a 54-yard 50 yard field goal. And obviously, you know, we think that he's one of the best in the country. And so, I think that uh, we got well, one, what we wanted to get done today. Uh, the, the elements were out there today, was, which was good. Our team didn't blink. Any questions? Yeah. You know, uh, Mike is adjusting from playing nickel to middle. Yeah, well, he's doing a good th a good job. He's not there yet. Obviously, he has some experienced linebackers in front of him. He's still learning how to play the middle, but he's doing a fine job for us. And I know you mentioned the, uh, the tight end It was, could you say that again? I didn't hear the first question. It was kind of the first part. Yeah, sorry. Um, you obviously mentioned that Ty Davis Price had gotten the exact earlier this week, but you know, with him and John Reed, is that something you're concerned about moving forward or more precautionary? Now, who are you talking about? I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't get the question. What, what position are you talking about? A running back with John Emery and Ty Davis. Yeah, oh, yeah, sure. Hey, those guys, hey, Josh Williams did a great job. You know, uh, we, we, we need these guys to come out and – and perform. These young, young running backs have been out there every day. Tyron and John, you know, have been off and on. And again, you know, I, I believe in them. They're great backs, but uh, we need some consistency out of both of them, and we haven't got it really uh, in camp. Hey, Coach, this is uh, Josh Sloan. Uh, you mentioned that you guys are going to be No, not at all. Not at all. We, we're very strong in the defensive front. Well, Glenn's going to come back midseason. We got some young guys playing well. We're sticking with the 4 3, and that hasn't even been discussed. Good question, though. Hey, Ed, uh, this is Glenn West with LSU Country. Um, this is kind of a different off topic question. This is more about recruiting. Um, I guess just, you know, we haven't asked you about recruiting in a while, but just an update on the 2022 class and just kind of where you guys feel. Uh, that you are right now, and then also you know, the fact that you guys can have recruits you know, on, on campus for games, just to talk about, uh, I guess, maybe some of the protocols or possible you know, restrictions you guys might have now with you know, the Delta variant and everything else. About. Yeah, first of all, we're excited about this recruiting class. Uh, we feel very solid with most of our guys. Uh, we have a ways to go. We're still looking for linemen. I mean, linemen is going to be a priority. We have some top guys in the state of Louisiana who are not committed to us who are recruiting, and we feel like we're in it with most of them. As far as them coming to games, uh, we haven't gone over the protocol of what they're going to have to do. I'm sure we're going to meet on that soon. But whatever the protocol is, we're going to follow it. Ben, Michael Cowell at Channel 2. Just uh, earlier in the week you talked about knowing 
they're trying to know when to push them and when to you know, no. let them have a break. How did you manage it, and what do you want to do with this this next week? Is that kind of like your last you know, push week, and then you settle in the game week? Yeah, we we uh, yeah, it was a good question. We uh we weren't going to go in pads on Thursday. We had too many guys hurt, so we put helmets on, and then we only had a walk through on Friday. And uh, we got a great scrimmage today. And we got what we wanted out of them. Today it was preseason game number two. The whole deal was to have a, a final great scrimmage. Now we're going on next week. Uh, Monday is Telatruth Monday. It is, it, we're going to fix LSU, obviously, but it's totally game planning for UCLA. We're going to have a mock game next Saturday against UCLA. And then we're going to go over the game plan again and fly to Los Angeles on Thursday and be ready for the game. Sounds like, I mean, Garrett's numbers were that big. It sounds like that's the second straight scrimmage. His numbers are, are pretty good. What, what, what should we make of that? Yeah, you know, he had some big plays. I mean, I think it was, it might have been fourth and 27 or something. And he, he threw a bomb for about 60 or 70 yards. Uh, he, had, he had some big plays uh, down the field. Max is our starting quarterback, you know, but I have no problem if Max goes down to Garrett getting in the game. Now, that doesn't mean that Garrett can't compete for the starting position, but right now, I feel good at Max is our starting quarterback and Garrett's behind him. But I think Garrett is going to be one great quarterback. He is dynamite. Yeah, Ron Higgins, Tiger Rag. Your, your two big out of, of, from the first game, is there a concern that maybe offensively you haven't had the continuity you want in practice because so many people have been hurt? Sure. And, you know, it all starts with protection. I mean, it's, uh, now we're going against a pretty good defensive line. We got to protect the quarterback. We got some receivers that can catch the ball. I feel good about our run game. We got to shore up our protection. I think that the next two weeks, that we're able to get most of our guys back, hopefully, and uh, I think we're gonna be fine. Yeah, you know, it's just the way Jake's calling it. I mean, that uh, you know, Max is running with the first team. Uh, we are starting to try to run the ball with the first team, but it shouldn't be it shouldn't be different. But it ends up being different. It all depends on the game, and that's the way Jake's calling it. That's the way he feels like it, and uh, I'm gonna let him do it. Well, you know, at the beginning, uh, I wanted to have a great hands-on with the defense, which I still do. But I'm going to tell you what, Andre Carter is one great defensive line coach. I've turned over the defensive line to him. I told him that. I told the defensive line, I said, you know, when I leave, and when, I, when I believe that Coach Carter's totally got it, he's totally got it. And uh, so I'm able to even go over the offense during some periods. I'm spending some more time with the offense. So uh, – the hands-on stuff was to implement everything, to make sure it's right. I still have an eye on it. I'm still looking at all the film with the defense. But I'm able to also be the head coach uh, because of the uh, coaching of Andre. I think Andre is a, a great coach. He's a motivator. He's a disciplinary. Now guys believe in him. So he's freed me up a lot. Uh, Sage, it's not practice a bunch. He has a nagging injury. Uh, we feel that it's going to get better. It's, just gonna t it's taking a little time uh, to heal. He should be healed in a couple of weeks. Uh, Derek is doing fine for us. He's not ready to play yet. I think that he can take some snaps. He's still learning the position, but both of those young men are going to be fine. They're just not ready yet. Uh, a one-time waiver to expand the 25-man uh, 
recruiting class limit. Um, do you like that? If so, why? Do you not like yeah. that? Yeah, we need it. I mean, it's about time. You know, uh, if it wasn't because of the COVID, there, there's no way we could keep up with 85. And I don't know what they're going to do if, if they go one for one. I read, uh, you know, some suggestions one for one or 30. Whatever it is is going to help us is much needed, and I think they know that. Hey, Coach. Matthew Broom from uh, Go247. Go uh, last scrimmage, you talked about the secondary not being completely there. You already talked about Sage Ryan and uh, Harris. So what did you see today? Who was out there? And what did you see? No, I, I thought that the guys played great. You know, Darren Evans is probably one of the most improved players on our team. I mean, he's had a great camp. He's out there every snap competing against some wide receivers doing well. Cordell Flott, uh, Jay Ward was out there to hold scrimmage, which makes us stronger. Uh, Todd Harris was out there to hold scrimmage, which makes us stronger. I thought that those guys today did not let the deep ball behind him, uh, maybe once or twice. It was much improved. I don't, I don't think there was many uh, missed assignments or missed errors or guys wide open. I think along with the rush and when we're going to get we get back our great corners back, I think that uh, we should be very strong. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Go Tigers.